Web designers, UI designers, listen up. 2024 has arrived and you don't want to show up looking like 2023 because that would be so last year. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my predictions for the 10 design trends that I see coming up in 2024. The first trend that has been very popular in 2023, it's going to continue into 2024, is the trend of dimensionality and layering. When I say dimensionality and layering, I mean layering elements on top of elements. It could be text on top of images. It could be images on top of text. It could be shapes on top of anything. It's just this scattered element scrapbook style that brings a lot of interest. And the reason that this dimensionality is so interesting is because it brings a little bit of life to your designs. And we're starting to get away from that desire of everything on the web and inside of your interface looking really, really flat. And so start getting used to this artistically placed scattered element dimensionality because it's going to bring that life to your projects in 2024. The next trend that really popped off in 2023, it's going to continue growing is the usage of 3D elements in every single thing that we do. Why? Because it offers these moments of cool interactivity, of storytelling, and the tools have now become incredibly cheap, easy to use, and accessible for everybody. So the technology is cheaper, it's more available, it's easy to use. There's tools like Spline and Adobe Dimension and all these other tools out there that are making it available not to 3D specialists, but to normal old web design and UI design Joes like you and me. And so we're gonna continue to see the the use of 3D, 3D in not just splash screens and singular moments, but across entire applications because of that cool interactivity that it offers. The next trend that we're going to see a lot of this coming year is the trend of complex animations. When I mean complex animations, I don't mean things moving left, right, or up or down. I mean scroll animations, scroll hijacking, entrance, parallax, and more than that. We can even see animations using the cursor. Things are really, really interactive now, and they're going to continue to be interactive because, again, of the interest that it brings, because of the ease of use of it. You can see just elements moving everywhere. Just It makes even the most serious website or interface just that much more fun. It just hits of dopamine. And I think one of the real kind of like reasons behind this trend is because of tools like GSAP and Rive that are making the ability to create all of these animations again very, very seamless, very, very easy to do, and very easy to integrate in any project that you're working on, whether it's a native app, web application, website, software, whatever it is, you can work these animations in. They're very low weight, they don't cost a whole lot, and they are really, really awesome. A trend that I am very excited about is the departure away from neutral, calm, kind of boring color palettes and the move into vibrant colors, vibrant gradients used pretty much everywhere. With the reintroduction or the acceptance of styles like brutalism, neo-brutalism, we're going to see really, really cool use of color uh, that is just a lot more playful and a lot more fun. You're going to see gradients being mixed around with textures. The whole thing is going to feel fresh and fun. And I mean, from website to mobile application, we're going to see stuff like this everywhere. Why? Because again, I think that 2024 is going to be the year of fun. It's going to be the departure from boring, serious corporate stuff. And we're going to start moving into interactive, fun, colorful, and vibrant experiences on the web and in mobile devices. 2023 was the year where AI artwork really exploded, but it was a bit rough around the edges. And with the advancements of the tools in this last year, moving into 2024, we are going to see a huge explosion with AI artwork, AI imagery, again, because now it is way more possible to find assets and visual things that can help fit the needs of any project. So we're going to say goodbye to stock imagery, and we're going to say hello to really cool, customized, dialed in AI imagery. And again, some of my favorite tools to do that is going to be things like mid journey. Pretty soon we're going to be able to prompt directly in the tool, no longer using things like discord, Adobe express, AKA Adobe firefly, and all of their 
AI technology and abilities is going to be amazing. And so get really, really used to prompting, increase that prompting skill of yours. So you get the types of assets that you absolutely need for your projects. 2024 is also going to be the year where some of the trends that we've been playing with for the past few years that have been maybe optional, they've been fringe, or maybe they've been nice to haves are all of a sudden going to become mandatory. And one of those mandatories is the trend of dark mode. It has arrived. It is a thing. It's no longer an afterthought or a nice to have. We have to really start committing to understanding how wonderful dark modes can be. A lot of these websites and mobile or native applications support both light and dark, and a lot of them even allow you to toggle back and forth between light and dark mode. If that wasn't enough, they also have to have some sort of automatic logic to them that knows, hey, if it's the daytime, give us the light mode. If it's nighttime, give us the dark mode, or just tune into whatever the native device's setting is. Dark mode is here and it's here to stay. So if you don't know how to use varying degrees of black and dark colors to brand them and tone them a little bit, you better get used to it because this trend is a big one. Now, I wouldn't say that Apple invented our next trend that we're going to talk about, but they did have a huge influence on design as a whole. And that next trend is the bento grid. You can see here, Apple has started to become very, very well known for these bento grids. Uh, Microsoft did a lot of this as well in the surface design back in the day, but they've really become popularized now. And the reason that bento grids are so great is because they offer this sense of organization, uniformity, they feel really modern, where you can kind of encapsulate different elements. But the whole thing just works together. They're especially fun when they offer some interactivity like this. Bentos can be done for the web, for mobile devices, for native software. They're just a really fun, simple, and easy to use design style that is great for any project that you're working on. So definitely maybe keep this in your peripherals because the Bento's coming for you. All right, listen up. A lot of you are not going to like what I'm about to say, but this next trend that's coming in 2024 is all of our faults. And that is the trend of morphism. Notice I didn't say skew morphism or new morphism or glass morphism. It's all of the above. And the reason it's making a return is because we are tired. We've overused the flat, modern, sleek design. We are now looking for textures, real world applications, things that make it feel tangible. So if that's glass, fine. If that's shadow, fine. If that's texture, fine. But guess what? Morphism in general is going to make a comeback and it's not going to happen for entire interfaces, but it's just going to be small little moments of joy and dopamine hit. So if you are uncomfortable designing in that morphism way, get comfortable with it because it's here to stay. The next trend has been a trend for a while and I think it's going to keep being a trend because it's really, really interesting and really fun. And that is massive typography. Massive typography used on the web is going to be here to stay. Massive typography in web applications, interesting things done, offset, off screen typography. It's going to be happening as well inside of mobile applications. This doesn't look as massive, but I promise you in context of the screen real estate we're working with on mobile, a lot of this is way larger than it ever used to be. And again, because it's going to be the year of fun, of experimentation, of doing things that kind of bust out of the seams a little bit with a little bit more playfulness. So get ready to really amp up those type sizes in 2024. The last trend on the list is less of a design trend and more of a tool trend, but that's going to be the continued trend of using no code tools to build out our websites and our applications. Why? Because no code tools are awesome. You can use Webflow right now, which really made some game changing moves in 2023. They introduced variables and applications and logic and all sorts of amazing things. This is not just for building websites anymore. It's for building anything and everything that you want to. Framer made a huge splash in 2023 with their AI website creation. It's a tool that feels like Figma, makes responsive websites really, really fast. And a lot of those advanced features like CMS and all that kind of stuff has started to roll out and it's pretty stinking good. And last on the list is Wix Studio. They are a platform that's allowing you as an agency, somebody who wants to do a lot of different client work with drag and drop interface. You don't know how to code anymore. You just need to have a vision. And that leads me to my final thoughts about these design trends, as well as everything that's going to happen in 2024 and beyond. If I could boil it down to two words, those two words would be less 
friction. I think from here on out, there's going to be less friction for creators who don't necessarily have a technical skill of 3D animation or code, but they do have a concept. They do have an idea. I think from here on out, the friction to actually create that, to manifest it, to make it come to life is going to be much, much less, therefore making it so much more enjoyable and easier. And I'm excited about that. I think if you have a vision, you have an idea that there should be less things to stand in your way. And so what do you think about all these design trends? Are you excited about them? Are you not excited about them? Do you think there's other trends that are coming that I missed? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you know when more videos like this one come out. I hope you're having an amazing week. Hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things and getting ready for this coming year. We'll see you in the next one.